Let us see which of these processors from AMD is better at ripping the competition to threats. <laughs> Funny bo. Huh? Okay la. What lao eh? A boy, you write the joke, sir. You write. Ngom lo. Ngom lo. Ever since we got our Ryzen 7 workstation, we've been hard at work to produce more quality content for you guys. But as everybody know, I'm part of the very uh, exclusive, a very bangsawan billionaire boys club. So today, we are gonna rise even higher to check out these Threadripper processors. How, like magic, right? First things first, Let's take it all off. The box la, you harambe. Hey, some people. We have the very uh, tubular processor itself. Stickers. And instructions manual. I'm gonna keep the stickers, but the instructions manual it can go sit over there. We have the equally exclusive and a very, very rare screwdriver. PM offer, PM -er. This seems to be some sort of bracket for the CPU cooler. Finally, the star of the show. That is fancy as fish. Fish damn fancy, you know? Like arowana, huh? Koi fish? Wang Pulio? And Purao, huh? Welcome to the battle royale of TR4 processors. In the red corner, we have the Ryzen Threadripper 1920X, weighing in with 12 cores, 24 threads, and a hefty price tag of 3,899 ringgit or 799 US dollars. On the other, also red corner, we have the beefier older brother, the Threadripper 1950X, weighing in with 16 cores, 32 threads, and an even heftier price tag of 4,799 ringgit or 999 US dollars. Next, let's take a look at the specs. As mentioned, the 1950X has 4 more cores and 8 more threads. It also has 2 megabytes more of L2 cache and a slightly faster base frequency. Other than that, they are pretty much identical. They have a 180 watt TDP, both the processors, 32 megabytes of L3 cache, the same all cores boost frequency of 3.7 GHz and an extended boost frequency of 4 GHz. They also have AMD's SMT enabled. Here are the parts for today's test bench. For the motherboard, we're using the MSI X399 Gaming Pro Carbon AC. For memory, we're using four pairs of Geo Superloose AMD Edition RGB DDR4 rated at 3000 MHz. These are 2x8GB dual channel kits, which adds up to a mind boggling 64GB of RAM. We'll also be using a Thermotech Premium Flow Ring 360 AIO to cool these bees down. And the creme de la creme 1250 watt 80 plus titanium Thermotech Tough Power IRGB plus power supply to provide the juice. For storage, we're rocking the Sony SVGS48 480GB G Series 2.5 inch SATA SSD. Lastly, the GPU that we'll be using is the MSI GeForce GTX 1070 Ti Gaming. Not that it matters anyways because today we're only comparing CPUs. So here's our Threadripper test bench. If you want to see the full installation and assembly process, please go to our Facebook page to check it out. Moving on to the numbers. We won't be doing any gaming benchmarks with these processors because frankly, they are not exactly built for that. If you're going to build a gaming rig, you'll be better off getting an i7-8700K or even the Ryzen 7 1800X and you'd still have more money left over to get whatever graphics card you want. As expected, the Threadripper processors far exceed our other CPUs in synthetic benchmarks. 
They are, after all, in a whole new world. In almost all ADA64 tests, we observed an 18 to 25% increase in performance on the 1950X over the 1920X. In the stability test, both third April processors maxed out at just under 180 watt in power consumption, around 50 watts more than our Ryzen 7 1700X. Their slower clock speed made them suffer a little in Y cruncher, but those extra cores really flexed their muscle in rendering benchmarks. Would you just look at the Cinebench score? The 1950X went super cyan and broke the 3000 mark. Hame hame ha! Finally, here are our real-world benchmarks using Adobe Premiere Pro, After Effects, and Media Encoder. While it is definitely noticeable, we're not seeing groundbreaking performance increases over the Ryzen 7 unless the edit is complicated. This is not surprising since these softwares are not optimized to utilize so many cores. You probably have better luck with 3D rendering for applications such as animation or architecture. As you can see, the performance difference between these two processors is actually pretty darn small. However, the extra cores on the 1950X should allow us to perform better in multi-threaded tasks such as rendering videos and whatnot. I choose you, 1950X! Some of you may be tempted to go, If you're a true bouncer one, you'll be getting the i9 7980X. I like, I like, I like, I like. I like it, I guess what? A true bangsawan couldn't care less what his haters think. Because haters gonna hate just like bakers gonna bake. The 1950X cost half the money, so I would rather take the extra cash and spend it on something like a golden plated toilet seat. Because every business I do is a big business. Sorry, no hair flip. So I beard flip. We'll be doing a custom liquid cool rig with this guy, so if that's what floats your boat, feel free to stay tuned. If you thought this video was awesome, please give us a like and subscribe. Also leave a comment down below to let us know what you think about this whole Intel and AMD clash of chips. That's all folks, we'll see you next time. Not just you, especially your Lang Lai sister over there. Oh. Uh, 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 uh. Ah, sorry, forgot you are here. You're so invisible. You do your job so well, V. Love you long, long time. Don't angry, don't angry. Sorry. Yeah.